Hey everybody, Cambo Trout with Peace of Mind Kayak Fishing here. And you can see from the title of this video, it says how to fish Maryland and pretty much anywhere else. But here's the purpose behind this video. The debate that rages now and probably will into the future, despite this video, <laughs> is uh, I guess the conflict between do I share a fishing spot, do I not share a fishing spot? Is it okay to share? Is it gonna be a spot burner? So I don't pretend this video is going to settle that debate, but it will help, and here's why. We now live in what many people call the information age, and what that means is that we have a wealth of information at our fingertips. But I haven't seen any real videos out there applying to fishing, and that's what this video is supposed to do. I'm going to show you some of the different tools you have at your disposal to find places to fish, and how to fish them more effectively. I'll put an agenda somewhere in this area that I'll name some of the different tools that I'm going to show you today, some of the different applications. But some of the notable ones would be the Google Earth, tips and tricks inside there, the Fish Brain app. If you don't know about that, well, it's time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's get to the video. And hopefully this will help you find places to fish, more places to fish, better places to fish, and how to fish them better. Let's get to the first tool. We're going to start off this tutorial with a little bit of Google Earth. Now I'm sure that most of you have used Google Earth or at least Google Maps in some capacity. If you haven't, I highly recommend it in terms of finding bodies of water, looking at the drainage areas, drainage basins, watersheds. There's a million ways to use this for fishing. But what I'm going to show you right now is one thing I haven't seen too many people use or be familiar with. So let's begin by finding your particular body of water. For instance, right here, I'm using Rocky Gorge Reservoir in Maryland. I've already typed it in. If you hadn't yet typed in yours, you would type it in, click search, and Google Earth is gonna take you to that location. So here it is, Rocky Gorge Reservoir. I'm gonna zoom back in to where I was to show you this particular functionality that I think not too many people know about or use quite effectively and that's to change the date of the photo of what you're looking at. So watch this point right here. Right now I'm in 2016. I'm going to drop this back one year to 2015. Watch what happens, especially in this area here as well as this point here. All I did was drop this back one year and look at the structure that I am now able to see as a result of dropping this back just one year. I can now see the degree of slope on these points, whether it's a gradual or steep decline. I can see timber. I can see the path of this little stream that runs into this cove. On this point, I can see timber, exposed rocks. Let's go back to 2016. Look at that. Unless you had mapped this area out, unless you knew it that well, you'd have no idea. So let's look at one more example in the same area. Look at this. This is all the way back to 2008. Look at this here. In those newer photos, in every other photo except for this one, you never would have known that this rock pile existed, that this ambush point, these two channels here, existed. This is excellent, excellent structure that you wouldn't be aware of if you didn't use this functionality. Now, if it, this slide bar won't immediately appear, you have to go to the bottom left, click to see historical imagery, and then you will take you through, or you can scroll through, every photo that they have for the particular area you're looking at. And the amount of photos or the amount of time that you have will be dependent upon the area. Some areas have more photos than others. But what you're doing is you're going back through history and you're able to, by using this, look at the structure that's under the water that's exposed during times of drought or drawdown, whatever happens to create those low water conditions. So there's a lot of other great videos out there about how to use Google Earth. This is just the one facet of Google Earth that I don't think too many people utilize that I wanted to make you aware of, and that's using historical images 
to map out the structure on your home and maybe your future planned bodies of water. So that's it for Google Earth here. It's an excellent tool, but yes, historical images. Yep, and let's move on. All right, so the next tool we're going to go over here is the Fishbrain app. You can get this on the App Store on pretty much any phone you're using. Like what I'm going to show you right here is the news feed. And your news feed shows all the different catches from all the different people or places that you follow on Fishbrain. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time here because there's a, I mean, it's all publicly available information. These are all publicly shared. But at the same time, I don't want to highlight everyone else's catches because, uh, you know, <laughs> it's their information. But yeah, this will be determined by the types of fish you follow, the places you follow, and the people you follow on Fishbrain. Now, getting into some of my own catches here so I can highlight some more of the details and features of this app. If you're a fisherman and don't have it, I have no idea why. <laughs> it's, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. But you can see some of my past catches here. Uh, the tool I'll show you in a minute. It's up to you how much information you want to share through this app. But if you want to, you can share the location you caught it. You can share what you caught it on, whether it was a lure, whether it was bait, what kind of bait, what kind of lure. And the app also records a lot of useful information based on where you take the photos to include air temperature, wind speed, general weather conditions. There's a little I, literally the letter I, <laughs> beneath each photo that you can click on to find more information. And here it is. Uh, casting, jigging, trolling, the length of the fish, the weight of the fish. Now, that's all manually inputted, so if you want to share it, you can, and if you don't want to, you don't need to. But here are the fishing methods you can choose from. Spear fishing, jerk fishing, jig fishing, you know, pretty much any kind of fishing you do, they have an option for it. And you can also follow different types of fishing on there as well. Same thing with fish species. This is how you tailor what species you want to follow on fish brain, and that will affect your news feed. So that if someone catches a crappie, and, or a crappie if you prefer, <laughs> and you're tracking those, and they're caught in your general vicinity, uh, this will pop up on your news feed. It's a great piece of intelligence as a fisherman to be able to look for where people are catching different species and when. Now, here's the other big part of the where aspect of fish brain. It tracks all the known fishing nodes pretty much throughout the country and outside the U.S. as well, but I'm going to focus this on the United States. Now, with each one of these locations, that little orange silhouetted number right there, that shows that there's a catch at this location you haven't viewed yet. So that's one way you can get clued in to looking at areas around you that people are catching fish. So I'm going to zoom in on the Susquehanna River up here. And as you get zoom in, zoom out, different nodes will appear. The farther you zoom in, uh, the more specificity or clarity you'll have. And you can change the type of map overlay as well. You can use a Google Earth or a satellite type view or a hybrid between the two. Now here I've clicked on Deer Creek. And once you click on a particular node, it'll show you all the different types of species of fish that have been caught there and logged, as well as the numbers of different fish that you've caught there. Or no, I'm sorry, not just you, that everyone's caught there. You also have the fishing forecast. Through here, they'll show you the tides, best times of day to fish. And this is all based on our input. So the more we input into, into the system, the better the intelligence is that fish brain can give us. But it's just, it's incredible. <laughs> Looking at the catch times for all these different people who have entered their catches and being able to plan our days more effectively, plan our fishing outings more effectively. Yeah, I suppose as a final note, when you go into your own profile, it'll sh record all the trophies of the fish you caught and lots of other very useful information for yourself as well. So I think that about wraps up the big parts of fish brain, but the greatest thing is finding those fishing holes. Let's check out the next tool. All right, so the next tool we're going to go over is pertinent to Maryland and Maryland only. And this is essentially a map of all the public launch points in Maryland. This is pertinent to motorboats and to canoes and kayaks and soft launch vehicles. But essentially what this says is just make sure that you read and adhere to local regulations, that nothing on this screen or in this tool supersedes local regulations. Read this for yourself. I've already read it. 
So I'm going to click Agree to the above terms and conditions and click OK. Now every blue dot that you see on this screen represents a public launch point for your boat. Some areas will include a boat ramp, others will only be a soft launch. You have to scroll in and click on each one of them to get more information about them. So for example, I spend a lot of time fishing on the Severn River. We can check out some of my videos down there for perch fishing, striper fishing. One of my favorite places to launch from is Jonas Green Park. So I scroll down and here we are at Jonas Green Park. If you click on the particular nodes, we'll give you all this information. The name of the water body it's on, the physical address, directions, the site name, phone numbers, the number of ramps. You can see this one is zero. This is not a boat ramp. This is a soft launch for kayaks. I suppose you could do canoes, but essentially kayakers use this. Kayakers, paddleboarders, things like that. An incredible amount of information will be at each one of these nodes. So this is Jonas Green Park. Let's look at another example here. Let's say I wanted to go fishing, oh, somewhere on the Eastern Bay, right? I want to go over here and I want to chase sea trout or striper on the other side of the bay. Let's look at Cummings Creek Landing. County, the water body it's on, Cummings Creek, directions, site name, number of ramps, one. So you boaters out there, you have to read the details with each one of these nodes. But essentially what it's going to give you is all the information on these public launch points. The bottom line that I'm trying to convey here is that even if you've arrived as a new resident to a given area, get out there and do the searching. That's all I did. I'm a Maryland native, but I was gone away from Maryland for about 12 years in the military, <laughs> going to various places all around the world. And I came home uh, kayaking for the first time, wanted to know where I could go. Look at all this. These are all public launch points, and they're not limited just to the bay. You can go and look inland for all of the freshwater launch points. It's a fantastic tool. And again, I'll include this link in the description of the video. Play with it more. Go to your own local body of water so you can find these launch points and see what best fits your needs and your boats or your watercraft. Maryland Public Water Access. Uh, provided by the MDDNR. All right, any questions or comments, let me know. If not, we will move on to the next section. So when we were looking at the Maryland public boat launch areas just a few moments ago, at the very end of that, I mentioned the Maryland DNR. Well, the Maryland DNR also operates its fisheries website. And what I'm going to concentrate on here are their fishing reports. And again, the link will be in the video description. So what I mainly focus on here, there's a lot of excellent tools on this site. They've really built it up over the years. But let's start with the weekly fishing report. The most recent one will always be at the top. So let's click on that. Usually, DNR updates this on a weekly basis. And it is mastered and written by Mr. Keith Lockwood. Thank you, sir. <laughs> this guy keeps us updated with quality information just about every single week. They'll start out with a brief update that reminds you about the Maryland Angler's Log. We'll get to that, where you can submit fishing reports yourself and read the reports from others. The Chesapeake Bay, some fish stocking operations, more freshwater action here, ice fishing, walleye, and finally tall togs. Like I said, Ocean City usually rounds out the report. But if you're trying to get a general sense of what's going on with the fishing in Maryland, the Weekly Fishing Report by the Maryland DNR and Mr. Keith Lockwood is an excellent, excellent source of information. Also on here, you have the Tide Finder. If you're someone who fishes tidal waters, this is an excellent, excellent tool. So, you start by choosing your region. Let's say I want to choose the western shore of the Chesapeake. And then I want to see, let's see, where am I interested? Thomas Point. I go fishing there sometimes down the South River. And we want to select the month. Well, let's say we're interested for the sake of discussion in January of 18. How many days of information do I want? Uh, just give me one. That's all I need right now. Number of days to get those tides. Here you go. High tide, low tide, the times, the heights. Because if you don't know this, not all high and low tides are created equal. But you also get sunrise, sunset, 
and I only chose two days. This is for Monday and Tuesday. I could have mapped this out over a week or even further out if I really wanted to. But yes, this is the excellent tool for those who are fishing in tidal waters. Let's take a look at that Maryland Angler's Log. By the way, we should have went first. <laughs> That's all right. So when you click on the Maryland Angler's Log, it will show you all of the reports issued by people on the website. And here's someone talking about Beechwood Park on the Magathy River. If you follow my videos at all, you'll know I have several videos. This is not me, though. <laughs> this is not my report. It's someone else. And if that's their haul, well, they had a fantastic day, didn't they? <laughs> but people like to let you know what kind of rig they used, what kind of hooks, the sinker, of course, the area. And I caught a mix of yellow and white perch. Well, sir, if that's your picture right there, you sure did. <laughs> you sure did. Uh, Calvert Cliffs Pond. Just scroll through it. I'm not going to read all these off to you. You know how to read. You can go to this website yourself. So next, let's check out trout stocking. It's about that time of year. If you're not familiar with the trout stocking page, they will keep a running tally and update of all the areas they've stocked according to the amount and the date on which they stocked that area. If you look at it right here, what am I interested in? Here's what I'm interested in, because that's pretty close to me. But it all comes down to where you live. Look for the county, which will be listed right here, and then drill down at the different bodies of water and the numbers and species. They have the explanation, RB for rainbow trout, GN for golden trout, BN for brown trout. If you want a forward plan, instead of just waiting for their updates, that's when you click on the spring stocking schedule. And this will go through every place they stock by county. I'll try looking at, Anna, at Anne Arundel County. It's a sad list, though. <laughs> Here I am in Anne Arundel County. Severn Run gets about 1,800 over the year. But it tells you what the closure dates are for your various bodies of water. And, again, amounts and areas. Here are your closure numbers with the code at the bottom. So if you look at the fishing hotspots, we may have to zoom in a little bit. Let's click on one of these and see what kind of information it gives us. What do we got here? Hackett's Bar gives you the name of the area and the description. During late summer, bottom fishermen catch spot and croaker between Hackett's and Thomas Point. Breaking blues and striped bass may pass through. Oh, and they do. <laughs> Quite often they do. So, just a few other notes over here. Angler surveys, invasive species, state records, oh, river levels, there's a good one. For you all out there like me who like to go on the river occasionally, they have a coded system and monitoring throughout the state to let you know what the water levels are at on the various rivers. This comes in very handy for trying to plan a float trip via kayak or canoe down various rivers. So, in sum, thank you USGS. And thank you, Maryland DNR, because they're putting a world of information out there for us. I don't care if it's fishing, crabbing, recreational, commercial. Absolutely fantastic site. So this next section I'm going to go over right here is especially pertinent for those who are on tidal water, especially the bigger water out there. Because what you're looking at right now via the El Dorado Weather Service, right here, El Dorado Weather Service, <laughs> You're looking at it. Pay attention to these numbers. They're going to cycle through as I'm speaking. Or what it presents you with is live information from various buoys throughout the Chesapeake Bay and just off the Atlantic coast. Now looking at wave height. Three feet out here. Wave dominant period, 11 seconds. Air temperature, 33 degrees. Water temperature, 41.5 degrees. Now not every one of these buoys will have this information. Some will only have the wind and wave height. Others will have wind, wave, air temp, and water temp. It all depends on that particular buoy, its state of maintenance. Things you should look into. Let's look at an example. And I'm going to use this one right out here. So, if we're looking out here, scroll down. Wind direction. Water temperature. If I can get a live water temperature without having to go somewhere, oh, you best believe I'm going to do it. Because <laughs> your water temperature and your wind and wave height are very big issues for me because I'm in a kayak. So I'm not going to drill down too far into this site, but it's put on by the National Data Buoy Center. Again, thank you very much. <laughs> They've put up a great service, great information for us. Check out your various buoys for your 
particular location and use it as it benefits you. So I've gone through a lot of the governmental channels and the information they can present us with, and it's excellent. No two ways about it. But now we're going to go through some more of the fishermen contributed sources of information. And the first one we're going to start with is snagged line kayak fishing. This site is designed for kayak fishermen. However, their fishing reports can be very useful <laughs> to those other than just kayak fishermen. You can see I'm already signed in here. You do need to register and apply what it, for what essentially is an account if you want to contribute and comment, things like that. They have many different areas in here. Chesapeake Bay kayak anglers, heroes on the water, Mid-Atlantic Kayak Bass Fishing Series. It goes by state, Virginia, Delaware, Maryland. Fly fishing, Let's see what we have here. Johnson's Pond over in Salisbury. Looks like that was from today. Hey, looks like he had a good day. Tearing up those gators, those chain pickerel. But it's a very supportive community, very helpful community. So if you're looking for fishing reports or looking to join the fishing community, find people to go out with, Snagline Kayak Fishing is a great resource. Again, this link will be included in the description. Let's move on to the next one. Angler's Sports Center. What we're going to focus on right here is not their physical location, although it's a great shop. I, I highly recommend it. Excellent gear. But what I'm focusing on here are their fishing reports. And you can see from the dates here the frequency with which they report. And it's usually weekly. And they focus on the Chesapeake Bay. So let's give one of them a shot just so you can see what we're looking at here. Now, there'll be video additions to these if you want to watch just the video. But here, yellow perch in and around the Annapolis area, Gray's Run, where do I need to go to find pickerel? Magothy River, Tuckahoe Creek, Unicorn Lake, and Hillsboro. For trout, they'll give you the link to the trout stocking schedules. Tuckahoe Creek, Patuxent, which I plan on hitting soon. And rockfish, Calvert Cliffs. Yes, this is Angler Sports Center, and there weekly fishing report, video and text version. 1456 Whitehall Road, Annapolis, Maryland. I think it's only about a mile, maybe two at most shy of the Bay Bridge and Sandy Point State Park. Great store, check them out. But again, what we're focusing on for this one right here are their fishing reports. So the last section I'm gonna cover for this video is the Susquehanna River Fishing Club. Now, if you're not familiar with this organization, this is a recent startup that was born, really, from the Conowingo area, but has since very quickly opened chapters in Pennsylvania, as well as further south in Baltimore. And you can see they have members Maryland, Pennsylvania, and New York. So, what is this organization about? Well, full disclosure, I am a member. I don't receive anything from, you know, from making this video. But it is a quality group of guys who are very, very helpful. Their pro staff is excellent, and they know what they're talking about, especially on those Susquehanna River waters. Registration is open on here, but the information and the fishing reports they have on the Susquehanna are unparalleled in my experience. And if you've seen my videos, you know that I do pretty well on the Susquehanna myself. And all of those videos came from before I joined the club. And I, I can tell you that their experience and knowledge dwarfs my own <laughs> by, by a large, large margin. What I'm going to show you right now is on the Susquehanna River Fishing site, and you can reach this page with the upcoming events by clicking on Events and Tournaments on the, along the top bar of the website here. And once you get down here, you can see that there's a lot of activity here <laughs> as far as fishing tournaments go. They have weekly challenges as part of the club. For those, you do have to be a member. But there are other tournaments they have throughout the year that you don't have to be a member for, but that will be immensely cheaper for you if you are. <laughs> and that's just one perk. There's many more perks to being a member of the club. But you can see here, Shad Showdown in April, Snakehead Smackdown in May. I can't wait for that one. Uh, Striked Bass coming up in June, July, Big Bass, Parties, Dundee Creek, Conowingo Lake. You know, the list goes on. There's lots of activity coming up. A lot of activity. So get on it. Come on out. See if you can take it. I don't know. <laughs> the guys are pretty good, but I'm going to give it a shot. But again, the biggest thing that I take away from it is the atmosphere. The members, the pro staff are all very helpful. They're all very friendly. And 
once you're in this particular club, the amount of information you gain access to because of the knowledge that they have won over years and years of hard work on the water is just phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. So I highly recommend, again, checking out the page, seeing if maybe you want to join. Like I said, they're expanding. It's not just the Conowingo chapter anymore. They've since opened additional ones from Baltimore up through Pennsylvania. So I think that'll round up this video. I'll probably give you a brief send off in a moment. But for right now, that is all. All right, so hopefully those, uh, that set of tools and everything that I've shown you is a help. If you know about any more that you would like to share, I'm open to ideas. <laughs> I'm never above learning. But yeah, I hope this video helped. If you know anything more that would be helpful to people, you know, feel free to share it in the comments or feel free to send me a direct message. But yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. Have a good one.